Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. Right now, we're at the start of an AI revolution. You might hear people talking about AI threatening to take over jobs or doing stranger things like playing games like the board game Go or StarCraft 2. But most people think that the arts and creative fields are outside AI's capabilities. But this is up for debate. A method called style transfer, which usually entails taking the artistic style of a famous painter and transferring it onto a still image or even video, has been achieved. In the instances of still images, the AI managed to fool 39% of art historians. But what about creative AI doing something actually useful that could potentially save millions of dollars and improve an entire industry by leaps and bounds? Well, this is happening. AI's creativeness is now moving into the 3D visual arts, potentially revolutionizing video game production and graphics. In this video, we'll take a look at that and some other ways that the AI revolution is seeping into gaming. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Since Crisis in 2007, we haven't really seen a major step forward in the visual quality of games. Yes, they do look marginally better, but it hasn't been an incredible leap forward. This is about to change with something called real-time ray tracing. Ray tracing, without going into detail, simulates the way light reflects and interacts with surfaces in the real world. It does this by calculating the path that each ray of light would take in a scene. Ray tracing gives that element of realism that's missing from today's games. Current games fake the effect of light's behavior. Ray tracing simulates it. It's why Pixar movies look so different to a playable video game. So this sounds good, but the problem with ray tracing is that it's very computationally expensive. Traditionally, you'd need a big farm of graphics processors to produce results. It's definitely something suited to pre-rendered CGI movies and not real-time video games. This all changed with Nvidia's RTX graphics card. With this, real-time ray tracing is now possible. This was achieved by specialized hardware tailored for AI doing all of the heavy lifting. The hardware is called NGX and it uses processors that are custom built for matrix multiplication, the mathematical heart and soul of modern AI. With this, the hardware-enabled AI learns how light should bounce and simulates this. It puts the paths of light where it thinks it should go. The result is a realistic, real-time image that for the first time comes down to the consumer level. In 2019, ray tracing was integrated into Unreal Engine, and now the technology can be used in very general cases. To highlight just how much of a difference ray tracing makes, Here's a video by Digital Foundry showing Minecraft modded with ray tracing. Minecraft is probably one of the worst looking games graphics wise, but with ray tracing, it actually looks pretty realistic. It doesn't end there though. Here's some real time ray tracing scenes of a BMW juxtaposed with a shot of a real BMW. Rounding up, here are some other general examples of ray tracing. In the future, this kind of video game quality will become standard. AI is also being used to create more realistic smoke and fluid simulations without the heavy processing that goes with it. Not only this, but a research team at the University of Edinburgh developed a machine learning system that is trained by watching motion capture clips showing various kinds of movement. The system correspondingly then generates an animation. This can be anything from a jog, to a run, to hopping over an object. To train our system, we first capture several long sequences of raw locomotion data at a variety of speeds, facing directions and turning angles. We also capture motion of stepping, climbing and running over obstacles placed in the capture studio. 
By giving his input the height of the terrain under the trajectory, our character can adapt to rough terrain, climbing, balancing and jumping where required. Either using the gamepad or the environment, we can get the character to crouch or move under obstacles. It can additionally be forced into certain environments such that the desired motion is performed, as shown walking over this beam. In summary, we present a new method for character control using a phase function neural network which can produce high quality motion for complex control tasks such as walking over rough terrain. It's fast, compact, stable and can learn from a large amount of data. This takes the tedious work out of creating realistic movements for video game characters. In a free market, whatever is cheaper, faster and better will eventually become the standard. The same applies to the gaming industry. Let's start with game development. It's no secret that the cost of video games is going up. But why is this? Once upon a time, major games could be made with a small number of people. This is because the assets or 3D components of the game were simple. As time went on, games strove to chase realism. As this happened, the components of the game became ever more complex. It's gotten to the point where it now takes a large team and the budget of a blockbuster movie to complete a major video game title. Andrew Price, a video game artist, conducted a talk at a Blender conference in 2018. In the talk, he produced a realistic estimate of how exactly things get so expensive. So one detailed 3D building can take 22 hours to create, 12 hours for the modeling stage, and another 10 hours for the texturing process. But the job is far from complete at this stage. There's usually a revision of two to four times depending on what's needed within the game story. The end process can be 44 to 88 hours of work just for a single building within a game. At a wage of $60 per hour, the average cost of one building is around $4,000. When you add up all the costs, it becomes comical. This single scene cost around $200,000. A full game would have no problem reaching the hundreds of millions of dollars mark working this way. The expense is largely due to the process of designing the elements in the game. Currently, video game artists use a static flow. From the design of the element to the output, that is the completed product, is a one-to-one -one ratio. To create a new 3D asset, be it a car or building, requires the designer to start almost completely from scratch. This is where AI comes in. AI, particularly neural networks, are suited to a kind of workflow called procedural content generation. This is basically where a neural network is trained to create realistic buildings, cars, or audio from vast volumes of data. Over time, it learns what looks good and what's realistic. With procedural content generation, a game designer simply has to type in certain parameters, such as a building should be of a certain type, have X amount of windows, and be of a height within a certain range. Once given these parameters, the AI then generates a whole bunch of options and the designer simply has to pick one with little or no modification. And this is where the advantage comes in. If another 3D asset is needed, instead of starting from scratch, the designer simply puts in the parameters and the AI generates it again. Countless hours are saved, even though to train the AI in the first place might take a while. The same process can be done for natural landscapes or even video game characters themselves. To top things off, what if an AI could create a whole video game by itself? Well, of course, this has already been done. Just recently, researchers at George Tech took things a step forward by using a general adversarial network, a type of neural network which we've covered extensively before on this channel. This network was deployed to invent new games. In their paper, they used video game levels from already developed games as inputs and then converted them into an output that lays out environments, objects, and rules for the new game. This particular system learnt from two games, Super Mario Bros. and Kirby's Adventure, and the output turned out to be a game similar to Mega Man. So I think this video shines a light on a side of AI that isn't really talked about. AI being not only creative, but actually practically useful. Combining all of the elements that you've seen here, it's clear to see that AI is going to have a drastic effect on the future of video games. They'll look better, be more realistic, and be much cheaper to produce. So which area are you most excited for? The possibility of the prices of games coming down, the games looking better, or the games being more realistic? 
let me know what you think in the comment section below. So that rounds out the end of the video. My goal with all of this content on this channel is to bring something a little different to YouTube, a new take on presenting information. If you want to support this vision, feel free to subscribe to this channel and share this video to someone who will be interested in the topic. That really helps me out. If you're looking for more and want to be surprised on the variety of things that AI neural networks are capable of, stick around and I'll leave a link to my neural network compilation video for you to have a look at. It's well worth a watch. Oh yeah, and don't forget to check out my Instagram. I've been more active there recently. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Togogo. You've been watching Cold Fusion and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.